All right, so you're building a fish and you've just finished attaching your rails and it's now time to look at getting your fish tail built up so you can shape that as well. Now, at first glance, it may seem a little bit daunting because there's no real easy way of clamping these things in place, but I'm glad to say it's actually a lot easier than you probably think. And I'd go so far to say that it's probably easier than attaching the outside rails. So there's a few tricks we're gonna use, so let's get onto it. Now the fish tail doesn't require the same thickness of rail as the rest of the board. So the, the side rails here are 25 millimeters thick. Well, for the fish tail, we don't need it anywhere near that. So we're gonna settle for about 15 to 18, or in other words, three layers of the rail material stacked up. That will give us enough to shape and should bring this whole thing in together quite nicely. So as you can see, we've already attached one side of our rail here and all we've used to secure it in place is a series of rubber bands and some spring clamps to keep the rubber bands from flicking off. We're gonna do the other side here. So we're just gonna insert a piece like so. And then once it's steam bent, this will just match this profile really nicely. Before we got to this stage though, I just came in with a sharp chisel and a rasp and I just tidied up this inside corner so that when we index our new rail in there, we get a fairly nice seam on the inside without you know, too much of a gap anywhere. So for the steam bending, we're just using the exact same stuff as the initial steam bending that we did for the tail. So we're wetting the wood, we got a damp rag and we've also got a hot iron. And then for our bending form, we're just using the same face plate that we used in our first video, but obviously anything that's round and about the same radius as your fish tail will do a really good job. So this allows us to have our piece put on here, pressed down, and then with a couple of these small clamps, we can just hold it in place while everything kind of sets and cools down. So we'll just wrap that piece up in some wet rag and apply some steam. With the steam, you do want it to be nice and hot, uh, but obviously you don't want to go so far that you dry the piece out. You want the steam to be softening all those wood, wood fibers and making it nice and malleable. Okay, so that's nice and hot. So we can apply one clamp. And then push the whole thing around this form. So we'll let that cool down and you'll see that this will spring back and be really cr close to the profile of our tail. So let's see how we did. If we shove that in there, just a couple of uh, lucky bands we can see that that's holding quite nicely so so there you can see we got a nice tight join up here and just with two rubber bands we're able to pull that shape in and conform nicely now what we need to do is apply glue to this and let it dry okay so for the glue i'm using the polyurethane so we got plenty of glue on there now shove that in there Make sure we've got glue everywhere. Couple of rubber bands, pulled nice and tight. Okay, so I let that dry overnight. Now we're coming back and we're just basically doing the same thing with stacking up our subsequent layers. These were steam bent in the exact same way. We just doubled them up. And just one other detail is that we put a slight bevel on this edge that mates in with the opposite tail so that we get a nice tight glue joint. Now clamping this is able to be done in the same way, but because we have that first piece glued on here, we can actually make it a little bit easier by just using spring clamps on the lip. So basically that's all there is to it. I'm gonna do this side and this side at the same time. Now I'm just gonna go one further with our design here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stack these layers in a way that we're actually building up a bit of a chevron pattern in the center here. So, so this is the way that we want this to be installed. So we have alternating strips in the center here. So we're going to just glue these on.
All right, so there it is. That's been drying for about two or three hours. Now all we have to do is trim it off. So the first piece to trim is our overhang here. So we're just using a nice flexible saw for that. And just like how we trim our rails, we're just gonna use the multi-tool. All right guys, so that is all there is to getting your fish tails rail installed. Try say that five times, it's a tongue twister. So the process itself is a lot easier than the actual outside rails, even though it probably appears a lot more challenging. And that's the beautiful thing about a lot of the processes that we use throughout our build. It looks difficult, but it's really not. So if you've liked that video, make sure you click that thumbs up button and leave a comment below. And also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, so you stay up to date with all of our hollow core wooden surfboard building tips and tricks, which are still to come. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time.